Hi, my name's Stephen from Keyscale Models, and I'm going to have a quick talk about this. This is Adam Savage tested model starship paneling. So, if you're unfamiliar, Adam Savage, Mythbuster fame, he used to work at Industrial Light and Magic. So, he definitely knows a thing or two about making starships. He used to make Star Wars. So, what you're seeing in this video, uh, I'm not going to play it, if you want to go see it, go watch his channel. Um, you can see him making panels that would be the sort of thing you'd see on an X-Wing or TIE Fighter. Uh, all these little greeblies, and that's track parts, that's, I don't know what that is. But it's all just these little things that draw your eye and add detail. But I've got a different way of doing this and I'd like to share that with you. With what the thing I'm going to use for demonstration purposes is the linear tank from Gundam Seed. So this is the massive tank the Alliance use in that show. It is basically overwhelmed by mobile suits and absolutely slaughtered. However, I think the guys behind this did a really good job and I want to show you all the bits from it that I'd really like. So I'm going to go to my 3D model of it. So here it is. Now, let's just start at the front quickly and I'll demonstrate just a little bit about how you can add detail to a vehicle without having to go add greeblies everywhere. So these are tow rooks. This is where if the tank gets stuck, you stick a chain through it and you pull it out with another tank. So right there, we just add a detail without doing anything more than add function to this. We've got headlights, we've got indicators, so the guy can see at night. And we've probably got more lights under here, but they're shut off for the moment because when the tank is driving at night, you don't want to be flashing big headlights. But if you're, say, driving this thing down the road because you've got to get from your barracks to the training ground, well, you've got to have the full headlights on because it might be dark and people need to see. So, yeah, uh, come on. Oh, that's the driver's position there see all these little viewports all around so you've got a very good bit of vision and a hatch on top so then we move on to the side now these wheels are nicely detailed in some of their material here so in their material it's basically that these wheels are motors in of themselves and um, it wouldn't work this way because these would actually need teeth to grip the track but okay and um, no let's move on so this is my rendition of them. Now I have taken a bit of artistic license and made some suspension units for them. And there is also a track tensioning system. So Chieftain, we are listening. Now that's also another point. These are big hatches on the side of it. These hatches have a purpose. It's so the crew can get in to change a wheel or change the track when it breaks, because things break. Now, okay, that wheel would be an absolute nightmare to get to, but you can't have them all. So, let's just go into the turret, because this also kind of gets to what I'm saying it here. There's lifting loops, so when they're doing maintenance and tanks, they have to sometimes lift the turret off. So there's hoops there, there's hoops there, and there's hoops around the back. So you've got a whole bunch of lifting points. You can just lift this turret up. Now, granted, for something this size, you'd want bigger lifting loops because that's going to be one hell of a turret. I mean, what's this thing? This is remember, this is one to one hundred scale. So bin to bin, that is forty nine millimeters. So that would be about what four point nine meters, nearly five meters in width. That's a big tank. That's a big turret. That's heavy. So yeah. That's going to be quite heavy to lift, but they've at least thought of that, and you could possibly put some chains around these big bits that are sticking out of slab steel. Don't know why they're there, but they're there. Then we come on to this bit. So, these, to be honest, they're probably just greeblies. Uh, you can see them here on the original. No idea why they're there, but they're there, so I put them on. So, yeah, actually, just Quite a bit. You can see where all the stowage is on the internals. You can see that the crew. So, yeah, and you can see sort of that, how that all connects. So, it's. Whoever's designed this has put a fair amount of effort into it. So, anyway, back to this. So, anyway, yeah, 
agreeably, so we'll move past them for the moment. So we got, uh, well, I'm assuming this would have been the gunner site. Now, I have mirrored it over here because there's no information telling me what was over this site, so I just mirrored it. Now, there's also laser range finders or assume some sort of hunter killer scope there and one there. That's an odd place for these. These should really be on top of the tank if you're doing it right. Like, um, it makes no sense, does it? Actually, this does. There's a big radar dish there. Anything on top of the tank obscuring its vision is going to reflect radar back and it's going to be an issue. So this is why there's also no like machine guns up here because why would you have a machine gun there blocking that? So yeah, there is logic to the design and that's what I love about this. There's logic there and it makes sense for the universe. And granted, the radar in that universe didn't work after the end jammers, but that's kind of the whole point is that the Alliance were caught flat-footed because they thought it'd be an easy victory and it wasn't. So anyway, on the back, just one last greebly bit I'd like to, or not really greebly, but one last bit. So armored hatches. So there, these could be used to say restock the tank or perform maintenance. There might be batteries or something else down the bowels of the tank that you need to get access to. So having hatches at the rear, that's fine. So you can get in there. But again, that's just telling a story about this tank. It's saying this was well thought out. This could actually be a military vehicle in a setting and it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be, oh, you could down there drop this into any current military and they would go, oh yeah, we know what we're doing here. There's smoke here. We've got lights here. We've got a big gun. Okay. The optics aren't where we like them, but oh, we got a radar. That's nice. So yeah. That's what I like about this, and I've tried to use this in my own work. I'm going to just bring my own work up here quickly. So this is what I call the Leviathan Buggy. So I've tried to use the same sort of principles here. So I'm just going to go through and explain things. So again, I'm just going to start off with the front. So towing hook. Now, something this, like a three-wheel buggy, probably isn't going to be trying to tow itself out of a ditch, but if you need to tow it, yeah, you need that. So, and at the front, we've got lights and indicators. We've also got this little bit. That, so when the driver opens the hatch, it doesn't crush the lights. It just hits that and stops. We've got a little mount there. That's for an antenna, but it's so small that you're going to have to use like antenna-thin things. We've got smoke launchers on the side. We've got lifting handles to lift this thing up. And we've got a whole bunch of other little bits all around that seem to be where it's bolted together so that's indicating that this is how you bolt it together and if you need to take it apart that's how you do so we've got a bay here that means you can reach in and pull things out of the internals if need be we've got what looks to be some sort of port here now in my mind this was a charging port so you put the power in here and that's how you charge it so that's the thing that you don't often see is how do you refuel the damn thing so, on the other side, I've got a little radiator grill. So, this thing might be operating in space or might be operating in an atmosphere. Don't know. All I know is it might have excess heat and it needs to vent. So, a little vent there, a little grill. That'll help it uh, alleviate some of the heat builds up. We've got storage here for the crew. Uh, we've got the wheel at the back. It's all mounted and you can see the bolts on this. And, so yeah, that's what I was thinking. Now, there's one other bit though that I want to go over. So, uh, da -da -da, actually, put, so, uh, where is it? Nope, no, not that, sensor. So, first off, I thought, well, why not stick a radar on it? So, that was that idea. Now, let's take off the Hellfires, or what I call the Hellfires, and put on these. These are what I would class as anti-ship missiles. They are massive. Now, thing is, with them being that big, how do you get them off? So I went and got the like design of how you make a shipping crate and just put on these lugs. So little lugs that mean that this thing could be carried and lifted on and lifted off. 
and oh yeah little panel under there so if you need to like load on new things you can open those panels and connect all the wires if necessary so yeah that's as I see I've not needed to overly greeble this thing it's a case of everything that's on this is there for a purpose there are bolts to hold this thing together there is panels where oh there's gaps in the panels where there's actually gaps in the panels for either construction or maintenance so yeah it's that's my philosophy and as you can see that's very different to what uh, mr savage does because as i said that's a very artist way of drawing your eye to things putting lots of bits on it so you see oh this massive thing and like the track tank tracks if this was on a massive thing you would not notice that those are tank tracks and that's the whole thing is that this works but i like also when there's been some thought of how this thing was made and how this thing was operated just put into it so yeah that's my thought on greeblies is they're good but if you can work on how this thing was operated and yeah you'll find that you get a lot of detail with it and you don't need to resort to random greeblies that make no sense well thank you for listening to my rant